Hey guys, how's it going? So this is going to be one of two videos that I am posting here over on MGF Extra a little bit after the Disney Investors Conference and uh, this was basically Star Wars Celebration and San Diego Comic Con Hall H all at once, all out of nowhere. I was not expecting any of this to be as crazy as it was uh, just before the weekend here. And joining me for these videos is Corey Van Dyke from Kessel Pack Wolf Run Transmissions. Bro, I, I think like you, I'm still completely in shock over the amount of announcements and just like, there no prep for this, right? We were just talking about how there was no prep for an event like this. Yeah, I, dude, this really was their fandom, right? We were all coming out of the DC fandom over the summer like, man, Disney needs to do something like this. And they did, and that's exactly what the Investors Conference wound up being. Yeah. This, I think, was by far the most announcements we have ever seen from any studio all at once, ever. This oh, was... yeah, hands down. Hands down, <laughs> completely insane. Yeah. So, starting off, we... <laughs> this is going to be the Star Wars video, if it wasn't already clear by the title. We got our first full trailer for the Bad Batch, the true Clone Wars successor series. The Clone Wars continues. This, and I've said this to Corey many times, was the series that I thought we were getting back in 2013 when Star Wars Rebels was announced. Star Wars Rebels wound up being a very different thing, but thankfully now, the true Clone Wars sequel series is happening and Corey and I were already sent to Cloud Nine with this footage. And uh, dude, what did you think of the Bad Batch trailer? Well, right off the bat, you know, as, as I was telling you, it's it's Clone Wars season eight, you know, yeah. like it's that's exactly yep. what it is. It's Clone Wars season eight. And that's exactly what I wanted out of the Bad Batch. Like one thing I told you, you know, when, when I had heard it, for the first time before it was officially announced was if this isn't in the same animation in the same tone as clone wars it, it, it wouldn't do it for me right yeah. like if it was in the rebels animation or if it was in the rebels kind of kitty storylines um i i definitely would have been like okay whatever but dude the trailer just straight up has a darker tone to it They're, they are setting up this very very like like confused group of clones right like you see almost like this clone uprising going on so like all the grunts must be like what the hell is going on like yep. this isn't what they were bred for immediately it opens with kamino and yeah. this immediately raises questions okay are they doing a, a canon version of the kamino uprising where the kaminoans continue uh, making clones even after the war and then eventually try to strike back against Palpatine for basically using them. Um, or is that something that they'll set up because, you know, the, the Kaminoans still need about 10 years to grow uh, fully completed uh, clone troopers. But the point is that very much looks like that's being set up or we are getting what I was very much hoping we would finally see, the clones being phased out. You got a lot of clones all lined up, all in one place on Camino, inside Camino, you see. I think Nala Say at some yeah. point she's in there, um, but namely on Coruscant, you see a giant, uh, but you know, a detachment of clones all lined up, listening to the Empire Day speech as Revenge of the Sith is going on. It is unbelievable. That is one of my favorite moments in all of Star Wars when Palpatine's ultimate grand plan uh, finally culminates into the implementation, the successful implementation of the. Galactic Empire, yeah. but Fennec Shan is going to yeah. be in this series. Corey, this yeah. is not at all something I think any of us were ever going to predict because we thought Fennec Shan was dead. I thought she was dead. So glad she's not. And now uh, here she is about roughly 28 years before the Mandalorian participating in the events of the Bad Batch just one year after Revenge of the Sith. Yeah, I, I think what's cool about that is this is the connectivity i was hoping they would include for star wars going forward now we know it, it inadvertently connects with the mandalorian i think it's cool that finnick shan has worked with clones before so when she's with boba fett it must be like a crazy like yep. thing to yep. see a clone in front of her 
Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, man. And I, I mean, I'm excited about that. I, I will say it's, she's not a Mandalorian. So I am a little bit surprised that she's wearing basically the exact same armor for like most of her life. Um, yeah. That's kind of nuts. But regardless, uh, it, that was a huge surprise. I, I it, It's so great, though, how coordinated all of this is. Right. Um, and and I mean, because that, that's just so cool that, that that she was successfully integrated into the Mandalorian, but also in uh, the Bad Batch and that they're kind of, uh, you know, synced up in that way both departments and, at Lucasfilm. You know, I think that's actually telling for her character. She'll probably have a bigger role in season three of Mando. Yeah, for sure. I mean, she is the Zam Wessel to Boba Fett, right? Yeah. Um, but then also you have these new classes of clones in this Bad Batch trailer, um, and they basically look like the anti-Bad Batch, which is very exciting. I personally would love to see some Imperial Commandos, maybe even Delta Squad at some point, if the Bad Batch gets multiple seasons to have them take a shot at uh, our, our, our group of uh, specially augmented clones, but then also um, Zygeria is in this trailer, and a you see Hunter, I believe, fighting a Zygerian, which yes, I was not expecting to see Zygeria or Zygerians really ever again, but that's very exciting and looks amazing. And then you've also got Tarkin uh, coming in with the final little uh, end bit for the trailer, but also the Clone Wars logo burns away into oh the Bad Batch logo. And what an incredible, incredible trailer. Then... Shortly thereafter, Kathleen Kennedy comes out. She's talking about Kenobi. And we have got, finally, after all these years, all the speculation, all of the hopes and dreams, the hopes and dreams being roused and then shot down and then roused and then shot down. And now Hayden Christensen is officially confirmed to return as Darth Vader. Corey, that is a real thing yeah. that I just said. And Kathleen Kennedy confirmed that they will face each other by the end of the series. And, <laughs> and this is a real thing I'm saying. Well, it's it's kind of mind blowing to me because I just think back to the times where, like this summer, you and I were talking about the rumors for everything, right? And like now we're here, everything's confirmed. And the fact that yeah, the fact that Kathy said the rematch, that this will be the rematch of the century. I was like, <laughs> whoa, uh, dude, this is this is a dream come true. This is the first major dream come true. I, I, I cannot believe this is finally confirmed. I mean, it, it's just been years of these rumors and <laughs> it takes place 10 years later, Kenobi. And I wanted to read off a couple quotes here now that it's officially confirmed. Yeah. Let me let me actually get the man himself. Hayden Christensen, ladies <laughs> and gentlemen, Anakin Skywalker, Darth Vader, my favorite character of all time in anything ever. This guy is returning, but um, <laughs> as I'm as I'm sitting here holding my hot toys, Anakin Skywalker, um, we've got Hayden Christensen via StarWars.com now. This is a real thing that I'm saying and reading. <laughs> I quote, it was such an incredible journey playing Anakin Skywalker. <laughs> Of course, Anakin and Obi-Wan weren't on the greatest of terms when we lost saw, when we last saw them. It will be interesting to see what an amazing director like Deborah Chow uh, has in store for us all. I'm excited to work with you and again. It feels good to be back. Oh my god. And Ewan McGregor, one second, one second, give me one sec. Here we go. Ewan McGregor, ladies and gentlemen. Ewan McGregor! Coming in on The Hollywood Reporter saying the most beautiful thing of all about the series is that it's brought me back together with... One second, here we go, here we go, one second. Listen, I, I've had these for a long time. Hayden Christensen! Uh, it feels good to be back is what Hayden said, but then uh, finishing off Ewan's quote, uh, he added that uh, the two of them will in fact be taking another swing at each other. So this is a real thing that is happening. And I can't believe it. Two of my favorite yeah. characters in anything ever are, are officially confirmed to return to Star Wars live action for the first time since Revenge of the Sith. Corey, it's finally happening. I think, you know, the, the prospect of this too, I had told you that we had heard from, from our sources that, you know, we're going back to the Clone Wars. We're getting Clone Wars live action shots. Yep. And Hayden will be in the clone armor. 
that he wears in, in, in Clone Wars. So, you know, that in itself is going to be completely mind blowing. Not, not even thinking about the fact that Vader and Obi Wan are going to fight each other. Like, this is going to have everything we've ever wanted to see on screen finally. Yeah. The appearance. yeah, and and the line in A New Hope, um, where Vader says, "We meet again." You know, this um, when I left you, I was but the learner, but now I am the master. It was never truly specific as to when it was when they last saw each other. So, ten years after Revenge of the Sith and nine years before A New Hope is still a reasonable enough uh, gap of time to say they have not seen each other in a, for a very long time. Um, and I I cannot cannot wait. Um, but you also have a lot going on in the way of Star Wars, uh, additional Star Wars shows. Right out the gate with the presentation, they immediately said that there would be 10 Star Wars shows in total. And Corey, the very first series that they confirmed was Ahsoka. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Worst, uh, one of the worst kept secrets again. Um, yeah. Yeah. Rosario Dawson is getting her own Ahsoka Tano live yeah. action limited series on Disney Plus. Corey, these are all real things that I'm saying. None of this feels real. This feels like we have entered the land of make believe. Um, but I yeah. guess this is going to be the Rebels sequel series from the looks of it. It does not appear yeah. that the story of Rebels will continue animated and instead it will continue here in Ahsoka's own series. Yeah. And that's that's a that's a pretty big shift that I don't think we were necessarily expecting. Yeah, I mean, I started kind of wondering about that as we started hearing the rumors of the Ahsoka series and then rumors of like a Boba series and all that. I started thinking that was the direction they might go in. And certainly Mandalorian set that up, right? I mean her saying where is Great Admiral Thrawn? Yep. Uh, sets that story up, and yep. so I, you know, we're definitely going to see the continuation of that. Uh, and, and I'll also say that I think, with it being a limited series, I would say by Mando season four or five is when we'll get all the characters together in that show. Yeah, you know, we'll get Ahsoka, Ezra, Thrawn, uh, Sabine, Rex, Mando, Boba, everyone together. Yeah, for sure. I think I think anything is possible with the <laughs> with the Ahsoka series. So um, uh, you realize that today, like our three favorite characters are having live action things. <laughs> that did not seem like a realistic possibility a year ago. The, uh, so, um, I, I think two characters that are for sure going to appear in the Ahsoka Tano live action series, um, Sabine and, and Rex, I think, are pretty much yeah. certain to appear. Yeah. Um, and they will no doubt find Ezra, who will, I'm sure, be cast along with Grand Admiral Thrawn for this series. And um, it, it will it will end my life. Um, but Dude, also... I can't wait. Um, the logo appears to be very much a world between worlds themed, which is exciting. Yes. Maybe the series yep. the series will begin with Ahsoka just being like, "All right, uh, Morai, where is Ezra? Open a quick world between worlds portal. There he is. Got him back. Boom, done." Um, no, but the next thing that I wanted to bring up was Cassian Andor. The show called Andor is officially moving forward. They have started filming now and uh, they had a feature of Diego Luna showing off a ton of really cool concept art, which all looks incredible. They've even got a Venator being deconstructed there, uh, which is something that we got a little bit of uh, a glimpse of in the Bat Bash trailer too, where Venator is being deconstructed and, and the remains of Venator is seemingly maybe on the the Fallen Order planet, Bracca, um, which about this, man. is We're exciting. Live action Venators again. Yeah, live action. Uh, and, you know, something that is worth bringing up with the, with the Andor show is that Andor was part of the initial Fulcrum Initiative and who was uh, a member of the Fulcrum Initiative that was Ahsoka Tano. So Rosario Dawson's Ahsoka could appear in Andor now. Um, and then oh, that man. that's and, happening and that's in 2022. I did actually, I'll drop a scoop for, for, for you and your viewers. Oh, boy. Uh, I did hear. Uh, back when we started running scoops earlier this year, that Ahsoka or Rosario signed a multi-show deal, so her appearing in Cassian absolutely lines up. Oh man, yeah. Oh man, oh man. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> um, 
<laughs> so next we've got, and as you can tell, I have a very lengthy notes file for this video. The Rangers of the New Republic series. This yes. came out of nowhere. This is not something that I heard even a word of, and it was very surprising. This is obviously going to deal with the New Republic. I, I assume yeah. shortly after uh, Return of the Jedi. I feel like there's a good chance we could see Luke in either this series or, oh. or Ahsoka. Um, no idea what this is going to be about. I missed the synopsis. Corey, what do you think? Well, I, I would say Han, Luke, and Leia make the most sense to be in this one. Yeah. You know, like this is literally the the building of the new republic. How do you not have the three main heroes at least appear in a couple of episodes? You know, th this I think, you know, you know what gets me excited about this man is I think this is where we'll get the Sebastian Stan Luke Skywalker. Yeah. And I think it'll be teased at then the Mandalorian season 2. Yeah. So, I definitely think that like like at first I went from will Luke appear like right here. Now it's all the way up here after seeing the <laughs> oh, announcement. Oh dude, Luke Luke is 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 no doubt going to appear. Yeah, um, at some I, point. I also do think we had heard that there was a Bo Katan and Cara Dune spin-off series in the works. I do believe this is that one, and I do think Bo Katan will appear in it. Yeah. So I, now I am much more of the mindset that I think there will be a shift and Bo Katan will now be a main character in Mando going forward. Yeah. Um but dude, yeah, I mean, the title alone just sounds awesome. Like, I told you, it sounds like an expanded universe book. <laughs> it does, man. After that, this was really big for Corey. Because to those of you guys who don't remember, over the summer, there were a couple of days where the entire internet was completely taken by storm. <laughs> I mean, this was everywhere. This was viral. I mean, Casey Neistat was tweeting about this. My guy here, Corey Van Dyke of Kessel Run Transmissions with Noah, reported exclusively that, Dan that Donald Glover would be returning to the role of Lando Calrissian for his own series on Disney Plus, and Corey, that got confirmed today. Yeah, man, that, that was super exciting, dude, because it's like, you know, there were so many naysayers out there. <laughs> we put yeah. it out and I'm so happy that that got confirmed because, you know, a couple of reasons. I know there's the crowd out there who really want a follow up to Solo and they've been very vocal about it. And I feel like this is this is good, man. It's like Disney is pleasing everybody. Right. Because now they get their kind of Clone Wars saved, if you will, because yeah. they get a continuation of a character from Solo. And one thing that you and I had just talked about was I have heard from a lot of different sources that Maul is a character that Disney wants to uh, can, you know, continue his story on in different different uh, shows. So yeah. certainly, him being in Lando makes sense. Yeah, man, I I'm I'm just so happy for you guys because there are so many people um, over this past year who have doubted every one of their scoops, whether that was from the Bad Batch show or all of these Mandalorian rumors about how Ahsoka yeah. would would enter the series and more. Um, the the Kenobi rumors, hating Christensen returning to the role. You guys reported on that, um, yeah. and, and then and then finally this this Lando Calrissian show happening I mean uh, you know they got the you know Corey and Noah have reported on so many scoops that have in fact turned out to be true but everyone is there to uh, you know cast their dissent but never <laughs> to celebrate uh, the, the rumors finally being confirmed but also Star Wars Acolytes is the series oh. that Leslie Headland is going to be putting out for Disney Plus and this is, is said to be a mystery thriller with emerging dark side powers in the final days of the High Republic. So we're going to be seeing the, the end of the High Republic era live action. And I have no idea what this is going to be about, but I will tell yeah. you as a major Star Wars Legends fan and as a huge fan of the Holy Bible and the best <laughs> the best Star Wars book ever written, everyone, Darth Plagueis, if you have not checked it out, the audiobook, I, this is not even sponsored, it, it, it is on Audible and I, I, I since <laughs> it, it's, it, listen, it's one of the best Star Wars experiences you can have um, if you're really deep into this shit. but also, here are the two Sith Lords that, that well, I mean, Corey, you said this is uh, supposedly 70 years before The Phantom yes, Menace. And do you know who lives for a very long time and is active 70 years before The Phantom Menace? Darth Plagueis, ladies and gentlemen. So this Mune shows up and he's like, hey, you want to hear about midichlorians and self-determinism and influencing galactic events? I'm your guy. And this is this Palpatine guy. I'm going to pick him up in a couple decades. He's going to be great. I, I'll die. 
Um, you know what I think? <laughs> then, like, I think this is going to be the same sort of show, kind of like The Mandalorian, where it spins off into other things. Yeah. So I could totally see this being the catalyst for Sith lore, right? Yeah. This is, like, let's just say this show is about Revan. Let's say it's about Revan or something. This is, uh, a Revan, I'm sorry. Revan wouldn't. <laughs> let's say it's a brand new Sith, and let's say put Tenebris in canon, and it's following a female Sith with Tenebris, maybe Tenebris' master, they change it up a little bit, and then that spins off into a Plagueis show. I, I would die. I'll be honest. I don't think Plagueis is going to be in the show at all. I really don't. Um, I think you know, I think I, I, I think we will get Plagueis one day. I just don't think it's going to be in this. Yeah. But um, next we have the Star Wars Visions anime series coming out. Yeah. Not an anime guy. Not my forte. But I am glad that that's happening. And Corey, I think yeah. you are too. And then also. We've got the Star Wars A Droid Story Disney Plus series. Actually, it's a Disney Plus film uh, guided by C-3PO and R2. And that sounds like fun. Um, well, oh, this is a film. Yeah, apparently it's a film. Really? Yeah. Um, so that's that's the first like Disney Plus exclusive Star Wars film, I guess. Oh, that's kind of cool. That um, I thought it was a series. Okay, I like that a lot better. That's... Yeah, yeah, for sure. And and then uh, only Anthony Daniels keeps getting that paycheck. Anthony, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> only two announcements in the way of Star Wars movies, which makes sense considering the the climate and the hellhole yeah. that 2020 has put us in in the way of uh, of of movie going, but. Patty Jenkins confirmed to direct a Rogue Squadron movie for 2023. Corey, there are a lot yeah. of good things in the in the statement that I just uttered. I cannot believe that we are getting a Rogue Squadron movie. I cannot yeah. believe. I, I have no doubt they will cast a new Wedge Antilles. Rogue Squadron is iconic in Star Wars comics, in Star Wars Battlefront, in Star Wars. Um, you know, I mean, he, he he's also in the books. I think there's there was even a Rogue Squadron b like book, if I'm not mistaken. Um, yeah. A pretty big deal to have this happen. I mean, this is the the Rogue Squadron is like the X-wing squadron. Um, yeah. I mean, even Luke Skywalker obviously was was a huge there's like part. There's a video game uh, based on it too. It's just called Rogue Squadron. I think for the PS2 or something. Right. Um, right. Yeah. So and, and you know it's cool because. Like, you and I talked about this before. I was never interested in the idea of a Rogue Squadron show. Yeah. But a movie, a standalone film, I think that's a great idea. Sure. Yeah, and, and I was telling Corey this. If Disney does not believe that Star Wars can survive um, in theaters with anything outside the original trilogy or sequel trilogy era, then so be it. Because we are still getting everything that we want um, as prequel fans and as fans of everything else Star Wars has to offer on Disney Plus, and I think that works. I think that's amazing. I think this is going to be amazing, and everyone is everyone's happy here with this new strategy that Disney has yeah. taken by integrating Disney Plus so much. And then yeah. um, finally, Taika Waititi's movie is still happening. So there was some concept art for that shown. Apparently, I didn't see it, um, but that should be great. It, it looked. I'll be honest, man, because because looking at it, it looked very old republic like. It really. Very. It, it looked like something you would see in the, one of those cinematics. Oh so, my god. Maybe yeah. Taika Waititi's gonna be starting us off on the old republic, but. Well, we we know that there's rumors going around of the Darth Bane. Uh, right. Trilogy. Oh my so god. He might be kicking that off. Uh I don't I don't see that happening. I don't see him doing Darth Bane at all, but that would be cool. Um. Anyway, Corey. This has already been a fairly long video. Thank you all so much for hanging out with me for uh, these last uh, 20 plus minutes as uh, we talked about the full announcement for uh, all the new Star Wars projects from Disney coming in the next few years. It is a very bright future. Um, we went from quite the lull in between the Rise of Skywalker and the Clone Wars final season to uh, sending Star Wars into a whole brighter new future where everyone is happy. And uh, you know, I really commend everyone at Disney for finally getting it together. I hope all of this is amazing. I hope the Boba Fett series still happens. Um, and on that note, Corey, I will see you in the Marvel version of this video, the second yes, half. Right. <laughs> Thank you all once again, and I will catch you soon. All right, take care.